Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? My recent podcast episode about the PlayStation Vita garnered a lot of interest, and it raised a really important question. Just what does the future hold for handheld gaming? So handheld gaming has always been a really interesting topic simply because it's been very different in different parts of the world. Not just in terms of how popular it is as a whole, but the forms that it takes and the types of games that people play. I think it's pretty much undisputed that Nintendo is the king of handheld gaming. They have been ever since the original Game Boy. And in some ways, they've really been kind of the benchmark against all other handhelds in terms of sales and popularity and gameplay and just overall enjoyment. But it's looking like even Nintendo is starting to change the game in terms of the way handhelds operate and and play. Of course, handheld gaming has been very traditional in terms of the way it's controlled, in terms of the types of games that you play on it. They've regularly just been traditional controls, you know, where you're, you've got a D-pad, you've got action buttons, and you're controlling a character on screen, that sort of thing. It's really been a mirror of what home consoles have been, at least for the longest time. But I see there potentially being a really big shift. We've started to see this shift. It started with the PlayStation Vita and the Nintendo 3DS. Those were the first two consoles that really implemented a new control scheme in addition to the traditional D-pad and so forth, in that both of them implemented touch. Now, they both use touch in different ways. In the PlayStation Vita's case, it actually had touch panels on both the front screen as well as the back panel. Considering how relatively few games came out for that console that took advantage of touch, you can tell that Sony just didn't really necessarily think that was that big of a feature, and so it's been also kind of downplayed in that touch panel on the PlayStation 4 controller. The 3DS is a bit of a different story in that it's got this 3D effect, of course, in addition to Touch, and Touch was pioneered with the original Nintendo DS series. Some games actually took really good advantage of Touch on the DS in terms of how you actually control the mechanic of the game. It was never really a bolt-on for a lot of these games. Yeah, in some cases, it's just as simple as tapping buttons on the screen like you would with a smartphone. But in other games, touch that touch panel is actually like the game. It's the way that game operates. So it, it's really been an interesting thing to watch how we've progressed very differently, actually, between handheld gaming and consoles. Consoles, for the most part, have tra stayed very traditional uh, in terms of their control scheme. Nintendo tried to do something different with the Wii U and the Pro, you know, and the, um, the the gamepad, but you know, even the Pro controller looks like a typical you know controller setup, um, and the gamepad never really made too much exclusive use of that touchscreen, with the exception of a few games uh, where it worked really well, like Mario Maker, you pretty much have to have, you know, the, the gamepad be touch sensitive in order to, you know, drag the items around the screen, that sort of thing. But again, it's, it's always stayed with this kind of traditional control scheme. So I guess this is kind of a roundabout way of saying, now that smartphone gaming has really started to take off, it's started to call into doubt whether we're even really going to see much in terms of handheld gaming going forward in the sense of that traditional control scheme. The PlayStation Portable didn't sell very well, at least not until after people started writing custom firmware for it. The PlayStation Vita, like we talked about previously, and I'll include a link to that podcast up there if you want to watch it, 
it didn't sell very well either. The 3DS has sold decently, but still not at the numbers that previous Game Boy and DS handhelds have. And I think a big, f a big component of that, other than kind of the, the marketing, politics, business aspects like with the Vita, has been due to this shift in mobile gaming. I'm not going to say that handheld gaming as we know it is going to go away, but I do think it's going to change. And I think it's simply a matter of these companies trying to go where the money is. Fewer and fewer people seem to want to carry around extra stuff. You know, back in, in the 80s and the 90s and even the early 2000s, you know, you, you were used to having to carry multiple things, right? We didn't have the integrated devices like we do now. We didn't really have smartphones that could take the place of all of these other gadgets that we would carry with us. So you'd see people carrying things like a PDA. Remember those, the Palm Pilot? And a dedicated MP3 player like an iPod. Uh, potentially some other gadgets as well. And one of those other gadgets often could be something like a Game Boy. Since it was normal at that time for you to have to carry multiple things, people didn't really think too much about carrying one more. So handheld gaming generally did pretty well. Albeit within the scope that handheld gaming, at least in North America, was still becoming socially acceptable. You know, for, for the longest time in the 80s and the 90s, handheld gaming was generally considered something that kids do. And of course, starting in the 2000s and very much now, you know, in the 2010s, it's become more and more normal to see adults and teenagers playing games in general, but especially handheld games even though it's still not the most popular thing like it is in other parts of the world like Asia. But because people were used to carrying all this extra stuff, carrying one more wasn't a big deal. But now we've got these integrated devices. You know, we've got smartphones and tablets that aren't just one trick ponies like their forerunners used to be. You know, when you had a cell phone, all it could do was place calls. And when you had a PDA, it couldn't place calls. It generally couldn't even play music. It was just to store information. Now that the smartphone does everything, people's desire, I think, to carry multiple gadgets has really declined. And they just want that one thing to do everything for them. And that's, I think, a big component as to why handheld gaming has started to, I don't want to say taper off, but kind of stagnate. Yes, there, there is this age-old argument about how traditional gaming on a smartphone sucks. And I completely agree with you. If, if you try to play a platformer on a smartphone where you've got virtual controls, like a virtual D-pad, virtual buttons, that sucks. You, it's just not very fun because the controls are really clumsy and clunky and not responsive. And it's not enjoyable. It's not enjoyable to have to fight with the game to get it to do what you want. And of course, companies have tried to work around this by offering things like Bluetooth game pads that can pair to your phone. They've even had some really nice ones where the phone clips into that game pad. So it's an all-in-one experience. But we kind of come back to that whole, who wants to carry that extra stuff, right? What we've been finding as time has gone on is that we turn to our devices, specifically our smartphones, when we have time to kill. And as our lives have become more and more busy, when we have time to kill is generally when we're out and about and we just have a few moments. You know, it's like when we're standing in line at the checkout. We used to just sit there and kind of like flip through the magazines that they've got in the checkout line. Now we pull out our phone and we spend one or two minutes on Facebook or Twitter or something like that potentially playing a game. Who's going to pull out like a 3DS or a Vita and only play a game for one or two minutes? Not that many people. And if you're out and about and you're not expecting to go out and play games, you're probably not even going to carry those devices with you. But that is increasingly what we have for spare time now is 
these idle moments, just a minute or two, you're waiting for someone to show up, you're waiting for something to happen. Uh, you know, you're waiting for a movie at the movie theater to start, you know, as, you know, as if anyone goes and sees movies all that much anymore. But you get the idea. And this is where I think handheld gaming really needs to evolve. So trying to carry like a Bluetooth controller for your phone, you're not going to do that because you're not expecting the game. And also you don't want to carry that crap. People don't want to carry that much stuff anymore. So where do handhelds need to go? I think Nintendo is trying something interesting with Switch in that it is this hybrid handheld home console. I think predominantly people are going to use it at home. I think some people will take it with them on the go, but only when they know they're going to be playing games on the go. Like if you're going on a trip and you want to continue with a game that you started at home, that sort of thing. I don't think people are going to be just casually carrying around their Switch console as they just, you know, go about their errands during the day, like you might with a 3DS if you're really diehard into it. But where things I think really are, are going is Nintendo is kind of, I think, going to kind of concede that casual handheld gaming market in terms of traditional hardware. I think within two or three years time, it's gonna be very clear that Nintendo will be the only manufacturer offering dedicated handheld gaming. I'm quite certain that the Vita is Sony's last attempt at handheld gaming. And in fact, I, I can't remember the date or who exactly even said it, but there was a Q&A about a year or so ago with a Sony executive who was, um, part of the PlayStation division. And he kind of in a roundabout way said that Vita is pretty much the last thing, that Sony hasn't really investigated too deeply doing a, a, a follow-up to the Vita, even though it's still fairly successful and popular in other parts of the world outside North America. So I really think Nintendo is gonna be the only one, but with Switch coming out and Switch having this handheld component, I think the 3DS is probably going to die within a year. Um, and I'm filming this at the very end of 2016. Now, we've seen this from Nintendo before. We saw this when the DS came out. Nintendo kept the Game Boy Advance series out for a while. And Nintendo actually said, as the DS came out, this is an additional product line to Game Boy Advance. It's not meant to replace it. Well. The DS series actually did pretty well in the marketplace, so Nintendo ended up killing Game Boy Advance in favor of DS in fairly short order. Nintendo has been saying the same thing. Of course, as I'm filming this, Switch hasn't come out yet, but Nintendo is saying, oh no, the 3DS is a separate product line from Switch. For now it is, but if, and I suspect when, Switch really takes off in the marketplace, they're going to do the same thing to the 3DS. Um, I think they're just trying to hedge their bets, and I don't necessarily blame them for doing so. But where I suspect within a couple of years we're really going to be seeing handheld gaming go is things like Pokemon Go and Super Mario Run. They're going to take traditional gaming franchises, and they're going to put them on smartphones, and that's going to be your primary way to play those games on the go. But they're not just going to try and shoehorn a traditional gaming experience onto a touchscreen. They're going to change the way the game plays to actually make it work well with the touchscreen. And I've touched on this topic, uh, see the pun, in a previous podcast from actually a while ago where I talked about Pokemon Go. I really think that gaming type, that mechanic, is going to be the way forward, especially when it's shorter periods of time. You know, it only takes a minute or two to go through a level in Super Mario Run. And all you have to do is tap the screen to jump. It's a very simple mechanic. It works really well with a touch screen. And it doesn't take a significant time investment. It's done really well. Super Mario Run had the biggest sale, or a biggest launch, I should say, of any smartphone app at the time it came out. Pokemon Go didn't exactly do bad either itself. So that just goes to show that there is a demand for that sort of gaming. 
And I really think that's going to be the future. Switch is going to be kind of that bridge where if you want a traditional controls-based game on the go, you can have it, but that's not necessarily Switch's primary objective. It's just a way to get there if you really need it. But sad to say, I think we're going to start to see as time goes on more of a divide between home gaming and mobile gaming when it turns to the way those games are played. And I know it's a bummer. Um, I'm not trying to say that handheld gaming sucks or anything like that. For some reason, people in the comments, a few people, not everybody, but they, they when I say these sorts of things, they think that it's like, I'm going to make it happen. I'm not, man. I'm just the messenger, right? This is just what I think. And the purpose behind these podcasts is to get you to think. I'm, I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm just trying to take you through my own thought process and maybe it spurs you to go through your own. So I know there's a lot of handheld gaming aficionados out there who aren't going to like hearing this. I don't like saying it. I really like handheld gaming myself. But the thing that people always forget is that gaming isn't necessarily driven by hardcore gamers. Gaming is driven by just the general public. Gaming has become so much bigger than it used to be in the 80s and 90s when it was driven by hardcore gamers. But now gaming has become socially acceptable to the point where just everybody plays it. And it's those casual kind of, you know, non-invested people who aren't Die hard gamers, they aren't super hardcore into it. They're the ones who spend the majority of money on these games and hardware. So sad to say, they are the people that these companies listen to. They do listen to the hardcore gamers, of course, but if that's where the bulk of the money comes from, well, you got to go where the money is. So sad to say, I think that's where we're going. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. I really hope that Nintendo continues on with the handheld gaming scene. I think it'd be awesome if Sony continued along with it. Or hell, maybe Microsoft pulls something really interesting and does their own handheld. It's not like Microsoft as a company doesn't have experience with portable technology. Just saying, it'd be really interesting. But in any event, I think, sad to say, we are going to start seeing this split and... Traditional controls are going to be for home gaming and this new touch, simpler control scheme with shorter experiences is going to be meant for mobile gaming in general. Of course, I'm curious as to what you think, so be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm also soliciting suggestions for future podcast topics. If there's something you think would be interesting for me to talk about, be sure to shout that out as well. If you like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThisDoesNotComp. And as always, thanks for watching.